Brandon Ingram's future has been in question over the past season and discussions ramped up this summer as the Pelicans openly tried to move them and did not sign him to a contract extension for this upcoming season. The question about whether he's worth the $200 million max contract extension is one of the most heavily debated in NBA circles. And if you feel like he's worth it, but maybe not in New Orleans, the next question I raise is where? Yes, he's an all-star caliber player, I'm not denying that. But how much is he worth allocating financially if you're trying to eventually work towards a championship is the question as all teams eventually want to reach that championship height or at least contender status. I liken this Brandon Ingram situation similar to DeMar DeRozan, even though it's a couple of differences between both situations. But they both have throwback games as well, which can cause some issues for teams and organizations from a roster construction standpoint. After five seasons together, the Pelicans are at the point where they need to figure out if the Zion Ingram duo is worth building around to win big, you know, in the future. And I'm pretty sure we all can probably think they're on the outs of it. They do not think this can take them to where they need to be. Now, this isn't a bad duo per se. Like, this isn't one of just one of the worst fits and they just shouldn't be on the court together at all. However, the duo does have some stylistic flaws on the court that raises major questions despite both being great in their own way individually. And honestly, the bigger issue than some things on the court that can be perhaps fixed with some savvy roster construction and coaching is if you pay them, will you have enough dollars left over to build a legitimate roster for the foreseeable future? Now let's think about it. Denver, OKC, and Minnesota not only are championship contenders now, but they aren't going anywhere anytime soon, along with Memphis and Dallas lurking in the cut, not to mention teams who are formidable now with the Clippers, the Lakers, and Phoenix, who you may say all eight, nine of those teams already are better than New Orleans. And then you have Houston in the cut with some young assets and some players that are pretty solid now. Then you have Golden State lurking in the cut, ready to turn up at any time. So if you're going to be allocating a lot of money into a young player, young asset, you have to make sure that the players that you're allocating all these dollars to, especially in this new crazy CBA, you can contend in your conference and for the league. But right now, the Pelicans just need to worry about being an upper tier Western Conference team. And getting into the basketball part of it, this past season, the Pelicans ranked 22nd in the league in three-point shot distribution, basically the percentage of their shots that came from the three. They ranked 22nd. That's just, in a modern game, that's terrible. Like, that's not good. And despite what some people from previous generations may tell you, this is a very important shot today due to the fact that you're mixing out on so much latent value and threes are the third most efficient shot in the game today behind free throws and layups. And to further emphasize some of the struggles that New Orleans has offensively, let's look at the top 10 teams offensively. Half of them were also bottom half of the league in three point rate and four of these teams were in the top five. So, I know you're probably thinking, what's the issue? Well, of those five teams, two ranked in the top five in rim rate. Three of those teams ranked in the top 10 and affect the field goal percentage, three point percentage, and mid range percentage. Statistically, comparing the New Orleans Pelicans to some of these teams, they rank right outside the top 10 at effective field goal percentage so you know you may say that's not that big of an issue but they were 18th in rim percentage they were 12th in mid-range percentage like that's you're not really elite at either aspect of those two shots yes they ranked fourth in the league at three point percentage but you rank 22nd in rate so you're not even shooting enough to really allocate the value out of it let alone they did rank 10th at 
rim shot distribution so they did get a good amount of layups but not enough to offset the lack of value you obtained from the three point so there you go as seeing the stylistic problem with how new orleans plays offense and look at how this team built from a roster construction standpoint having two ball dominant scores who aren't great playmakers and don't capitalize off perimeter space on the floor can be very problematic both players ingram and zion need surrounding space to maximize their games let's look at this play right here as the ball is entered to the post and as valentunas starts to continue his back down he draws the help defense by caruso with ingram at the perimeter but look he catches and look that momentary freeze allows the defense to recover just take the three bro he dribbles trying to look for a mid-range and just throws up a crazy flailing shot at the run leading to an out-of-bounds possession by the offense just missed opportunity there just take the catch and shoot three and the weird thing is brandon ingram when he shoots threes isn't bad at it he shoots a fair solid percentage he simply just doesn't take them and me personally that's almost as bad as being a non-shooter to be honest and four to five years ago this wasn't an issue not only from 2019 to 2021 he averaged around six attempts per game he shot nearly 40 percent from three i mean but if you look at the time new orleans at the time had lonzo ball a true floor general when Lonzo leaves, you replace him with CJ McCollum, and then his three-point attempts start taking a dive as he takes a more on-ball playmaking role as well. And yes, I wouldn't be doing my job as an analyst right now if I didn't admit he is one of the best mid-range scorers in the NBA. He shot nearly 50% from mid-range last season. But let's sit back and take a comparison of these two shots versus his mid-range scoring and when he shot three pointers and see the value of those shots. And as you see right here, there's a big discrepancy between the value of those two shots. So it's obvious which one he needs to take more. This isn't a Brandon Ingram is the problem video though. So I don't want to even go down that angle. The Pelicans do have Zion, but He's the franchise player, so harping on him is irrelevant because he's a focal point. He's going to stay regardless. But they have Herb Jones. They have Jonas. They have Larry Nance. A healthy Dyson Daniels all make this issue more detrimental because let's really take a look at what offense is. Offense is composed of four main things. Spacing, creating mismatches, attacking closeouts, and making two guard one. Yes, the Pelicans do a good job of making two guard run with Zion and Ingram. And even if they had good spacing, probably would do well at that regardless. However, they don't. So it's kind of gas to a bit. And when you're not able to space the floor well, it makes attacking closeouts harder. Even if you get a mismatch, the spacing isn't that good to be able to capitalize off it to your max potential. So as you see, the lack of spacing just creates a trickle down effect. Now, I know an obvious solution may have just popped in your head. Hey, what if you just replace Jonas with the stretch five? But that stretch five not only has to be able to shoot, but bang in a post defensively and rebound well. Now, where are you going to find that just laying around in the streets? Because that sounds like a very valuable asset, in my opinion. And teams aren't just letting that go for nothing or just leaving that sitting around in the free agency market. Leading to this next point of moves made or to be made, I am personally confused about the DeJounte Murray move because he's supposed to help the issue, I'm guessing, but how does he help optimize Ingram and Zion as he's an on-ball shot creator who loves to take his fair share of mid-range shots as well and doesn't finish good around the rim? I kind of get it. If you don't have Ingram on the team because Murray is a high value mid range shooter on good efficiency from that area, while also being a higher volume three point shooter, which you know shoots a higher percentage, and in this defensive infrastructure, maybe get back to his pre Atlanta days. And yes, he's not Lonzo, but he does have some passing chops. But then you got to ask yourself as a GM. 
is Zion Murray plus Ingram worth what it's going to cost you financially. And with this new CBA, if you start playing the luxury type of games for a fit that has a first round upside, well, that won't benefit anybody. Now, the Pelicans have to either get Brandon Ingram to potentially sign under his worth, trade him for cents on the dollar, or let him walk for nothing. However, I really hope you guys like this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching and comment your thoughts on the New Orleans Pelicans. What they should do with Brandon Ingram? Should they let him walk? Should they keep him? Who? Where? Should they trade him to? For? I don't know. Give some suggestions. Maybe it'll happen. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and have a great day.